Hygro.com Antique Boxes A Kingwood and Brass Fully Fitted Dressing Box The design incorporates the quiet grace and subtle characteristics of an age steeped in quiet dignity of neoclassicism. A piece of paper in the box claims that it was owned by Daisy, Countess of Warwick, a feisty lady whose most significant lover was the Prince of Wales, later to become Edward VII. The people mentioned in the note are no longer with us, so we cannot check the authenticity of the information. However, there is no reason to doubt this chapter of history of the box. Several points support the probability that this luxurious item was the property of a person fitting the profile of Daisy. The initials engraved on the silver match Daisy's initials. The date on the silver tops predates Daisy's birth by about 20 years. However, this is not unusual in a family heirloom of such quality. It is interesting also that the engraving of the initials is done in Gothic script, which was generally later than the date of manufacture of the actual silver. The workmanship that crafted the box is of impeccable quality. The veneer is so cut kingwood, a costly timber rarely used for whole boxes on account of the narrow width of the wood. The subtle, beautiful figure of the wood is accented discreetly with brass lines. The thicker edge pieces feature an engraved line which softens the austerity of the brass. The gilded silver has the hallmarks for London 1839. The sponsors or maker's mark is that of Charles Rawlings and William Summers. The partnership began in 1829 when their address was Book Street, Holborn. They moved to 10 Great Marlborough Street, Regent Street at the beginning of 1839. The partnership produced snuff boxes, wind labels, as well as lids, such as this. It is interesting also that the engraving of the initials is done in Gothic script which was generally later than the date of manufacture of the actual silver. When the box came into our possession, I had no idea who Daisy was. Fortunately, Sashila Anand had researched the life of this remarkable person and written her biography. We owe her a big posthumous thank you. As I began to read, I was astonished to find a woman who deserves to be not just well known, but also celebrated for her personal achievements. Daisy was born in an age when women were expected to be merely ornamental. Daisy became a social and political force, stronger than many men of her time. She was a blazing social reformer 
and she was known as Red Daisy. In 1923, she stood against Anthony Eden within an election, but inevitably she lost. Daisy was far ahead of historical possibilities, going against the natural propensities of her class and sex. Daisy espoused socialism, supporting the cause both practically and politically. Victorian patronizing charity without addressing the most. The root of poverty was not acceptable to her robust and fair way of thinking. She was ahead of her time, but used her Victorian position of privilege and wealth to actively promote better nutrition and education for underprivileged children. Kingwood is a type of rosewood. The French called it Bois de Villette to distinguish it from rosewood, which they called Bois de Rose. I think the French names are more from the scent given off when the wood is worked than from the appearance. The figure is the sort that stimulates the imagination. Grain figures of rosewood have long been admired by the Chinese. The perfume bottles are in themselves exquisite. The curved shoulders are cut with hobnail cut. This is associated with the glass being manufactured in both Cork and Waterford. The fluted cuts are all slightly uneven. I wonder if they record the sound of the workshop where they were cut. A bit like we often suppose a potter's wheel. There is something so connecting in time, place and craftsmanship in an object like this. The gilded silver has the hallmarks for London 1839. The sponsors or maker's mark is that of Charles Rawlings and William Summers. The partnership began in 1829 when their address was Brook Street, Holborn. They moved to 10 Great Marlborough Street, Regent Street at the beginning of 1839. The partnership produced snuff boxes, wine labels, as well as lids such as this. The lock plate is stamped J.T. Needs 128 Piccadilly and late J. Brahma 124 Piccadilly with a crown. J.T. Needs took over Brahma in 1871. The working lock is a Brahma type. The patented Brahma lock. To engage the key has to be pushed into the lock. The sprung or sliders are brought to the right positions by grooves cut into the barrel of the key rather than the flag. The hinges are stamped E. Wills and Co. Patent. They are particular in that they are deeply recessed into the sides and almost invisible when the box is closed. The screw fastenings are hidden behind the velvet lining. The 
the figure and the orchestration of the top is exceptional. Kingwood trees are narrow and wide pieces just do not exist. The central piece is created from two slices, one turned over to give a mirror image reflection of the other. The line of join can only be seen when very carefully examined. And the line of brass inlay punctuates the accents and separates the cross bandings. The edging brass features an engraved line which soften the austerity of an otherwise wide brass line. And as ladies of higher social excellence made long house visits to the stately homes of their friends, the vanity box would command pride of place on the dressing table, its contents sometimes spread around it for the hostess and other guests to glimpse, a hint of the quality of its owner. The piercing is all hand cut. This is evidenced by the piercing saw marks which can be seen under magnification. It became an exposition of social status, style ranking and, of course, wealth. In the lid of the box there is a document wallet. This is accessed with a secret catch incorporated in the lock plate. The tenon is pushed up with the thumb. And then the entire panel opens down, revealing the document wallet, which is all made of leather, and a compartment behind with a leather framed mirror. The dressing box was, and still is, the ultimate lifestyle accessory. Not only did it contain, in a compact and elegant manner, items necessary for personal grooming, the very quality and aesthetic standard of both the box and its contents conferred onto the owner the stamp of elegance and distinction.